So yeah, I guess it's just, crazy. The rain went over the same places over and over and over again, I guess. But sounds like it. Wow. Yeah, we had that about three or four weeks ago, but now our yard is finally slowly getting deflooded. So oh, wow. <laughs> super, super hot. So I was actually wondering about that, Karen. If you're is your dog able to go outside now and no, we still have him on a leash. It's a pain. Oh, <laughs> he has to sorry. stay right with me. That's okay. It's it's life. It's it's okay. Yeah. I got situated here, but we're just gonna do this. How is everyone? Good. Good. Good, Good deal. Um okay. I am doing second Timothy one this this week and this morning i found some really cool stories to go with it so in advance i'm reading from the voice that has any of y'all seen this it's voice no. of the martyr extreme devotion we did it with alexis when she was younger and i told my husband after reading some of these we need to do this with faith it's so good so that's what i'm gonna be reading out of um a little later on that so this week was hard to decide y'all. It was really hard. I, I really struggled with it because I was reading and I was like, Oh, what do I do? Second Timothy one, two, three. I mean, they're all really good, you know, and it's really hard. Um, and then some weeks it's really easy. Like next week, I think I'm going to do Fleeman just because I love Fleeman. I love the book of Fleeman, the one chapter and everything. And I just love it. It's so good. Um, but this week was really hard. Okay. I chose, um, chapter one mainly because i felt like the other chapters we've talked about a lot of these topics in it and so i'm like eh, i want to kind of get something where we haven't really talked about some of the topics on it try to you know broaden the horizon and um get some more like uh talk like to topics on things like that so we will uh just go ahead and do second timothy one today then um and if y'all ever, if there's like a chapter that you just really think, oh, this is, I really, and sometimes if it confuses me, if I'm stumped on it, those are the ones I like to do because I want to kind of understand them better. And I feel like if I'm confused, then I want to, it's better to dig deep into those rather than the easy ones. And that's happened a few times this year where I'm like, oh, I really want to do this. And I'm like, well, this one's actually more confusing. So let me just go ahead and do that. Even though this one's really, really good. Um, so anyway, right, if y'all ever want to go over a chapter, just let me know in everything. So um, anybody have anything? I was just going to say, Shannon, that last week, my husband leads out in prayer meeting and we still do it Zoom here because of, um, I actually get more people Zoom. But anyway, um, last week he couldn't do it. And, but he couldn't, well, he, my son wanted him to do something with him. And I have never let out in anything for anything. That's just not me. I'm happy to be behind the scenes. I'm all about behind the scenes. I'll work all day long for you behind the scenes. Just don't put me up front. But anyway, my son wanted him to do this. And I was like, how often do you get to do this? Go ahead and do it. And he was like, well, who am I going to get to cover? I said, I'll cover it for you. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I'll cover it for you. And he was like, okay. He said, but then I want to be there if you're going to cover it. And I was like, no, that would make me way more nervous if you were there. <laughs> So anyway, it, I would never, ever, ever have done that before this group. Never. I, I just wouldn't have. And wow. so I went over um, first Timothy two, we went over that chapter and which they thought was an odd chapter when I first started. But when I tied it into the end about child, how childbearing saves you and stuff. And I gave a little bit of my testimony on, on how that works for me. And anyway, I just was like, I have to share with Shannon. I never, ever would have done that. But because of, of you and this group and everything, I felt, I didn't feel comfortable, but I felt way more comfortable than I ever would have. So I just thank you. I thank oh, you for what you've done. That's awesome, Sue. That totally is awesome. But y'all are all, I mean, it's not me. It's just, this is, we're a group here. It's not just me. So I definitely look at this as a group and talk about being nervous. My husband will be home soon and I'll be really nervous whenever he's here, whenever I do this, because I'll be like, what is he, is he thinking I'm saying this wrong? Did I say this wrong? You know, and thinking he's a judge. Well, there he goes. He's coming in right now. I see the garage door opening. <laughs> so talking about nervous. So, but thank you for sharing that, Sue. That's awesome. That is awesome. I couldn't imagine you not being that way though. I mean, I imagine 
imagine you being one that de definitely would be in in doing those kind of things and everything. Because I'm like, it doesn't bother me at all. But that's just who I am. Like, you know, I think I've shared that before. Me and Lori used to do coupon classes. She would be like a nervous wreck on the way there, and I'd be like, "What are you talking about? Let's just go up on the tie and start talking." You know, we're talking about coupons. It's easy. You know. So, um, but that's awesome, Sue. I'm sure you did awesome at it too. Well, I don't know about that, but it was, it was all women for some reason. It ended up being all women and it worked out really neat since we were talking mainly about child bear. It's like the Lord really worked it out. So yeah. Awesome. And it I was a it. smaller group. Uh, like last night we had a much larger, bigger group. And I told my husband, I am so glad this is not the week I had to lead out. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Very cool. What a way to start. It's like, we can finish now. We're, we're good. <laughs> so, um, does anybody want to lead us in prayer? I can lead us in prayer, Shannon. Awesome. Thanks, <laughs> I feel like I've already talked too much already. So. No, you're good. <laughs> anyway, almost gracious heavenly father, dear Lord, we thank you so very much for this group that um, we are all a part of here. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have promised where two or three are gathered together, that you would be there. And so, dear Lord, we're inviting you in today and expecting that you be here with us to lead us and guide us in our thoughts. We thank you, dear Lord, for um, the circumstances you put us in outside of our comfort zone sometime to lead us and grow us. And I pray that you be with Shan uh, Shannon right now. And she said that her husband, Shannon, was coming home and that makes her a little nervous that you would calm her nerves and that you would speak through her, her to guide us in what we need to hear from you today. I pray in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And he pointed over, you can come say hi. <laughs> he kind of sneaked in. Thank you for the prayers. I made it. She was talking about being nervous and I said, well, talking about my husband's being home. My husband's going to be home while I do this. I'm going to be really nervous. Is he going to be like, what is she saying? It's wrong. <laughs> So uh, even if I go to the very far back bedroom and stuff, I'll still hear her. So she'll know that <laughs> <laughs> have fun. Bye. You, you Bye. Can, you can see you. <laughs> um, okay. So Stacy, if you don't mind reading um, verses one through seven, we'll okay. go ahead and tackle, tackle this one. Okay. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanksgiving. I thank God, whom I serve, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your grandmother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also appeal for the loyalty to paul in the gospel for this reason i remind you to fan into the flame of the gift of god which is in you through the laying on of hands for the spirit god gave us does not make us timid but gives us power love and self-discipline yeah i love this um i absolutely love like where it says remembering your tears i long to see you so that i may be filled with joy you know it's just like i think because i'm not a crier you know, it's like that to me, that just kind of shows their relationship. You know, there's very few people I've actually cried in front of. Um, and I can remember those moments, um, especially like with my mentor um, and everything. It's just been like, it, I, it's just that, that vulnerableness, you know, that they had with one another. So it's really beautiful. I just love that. That's kind of pointed out. I didn't really have that in my notes, but as Stacy was reading that, it made me think about that. I was like, man, that is really powerful. I didn't think about that when I was doing this study. Um, so as Paul wrote awaiting death, he reminded Timothy that the purpose of his apostleship had been to proclaim the gospel, the promise of life. Um, you know, I, I don't know, but some, I always forget Paul was in jail and awaiting death as he wrote this. And one can go to Rome today and see the place where they say Paul was in prison. And it really was just a cold dungeon, a cave in the ground with bare walls and a little hole in the ceiling where, where food was dropped down. And there were no windows. It's not like here where our prison, where, you know, prison here is not like prison, like here, you know, it's like, they really did like, you know, there was no internet and, you know, books to read and TV to watch and stuff like that. It was just like here, they really were, it's like solitary confinement, you know? 
Um, there were no windows. It was just cold, a little cell that would have been especially uncomfortable in the winter. And so I forget that Paul was, this is where Paul was. He was here because of Christ. It was nothing, you know, it was because of Jesus and Jesus alone. Um, and it's kind of just, and he's just so like joyful. He's not like telling you how bad he has it. Like I would be, I'd be like, look here, let me tell you. I mean, I can still remember the, the time when I was in Indonesia and I slept on the ground on the dirt. And I'm like, I still talk about that. Like I toughed it out, you know, and that was for Jesus, you know? And so, and that was like nothing, you know? Um, so verse two, the thought was the here, the thought was interesting. Spurgeon used this verse along with first Timothy one, two and Titus one, four to show that ministers need more mercy than others do. So where he says grace, mercy, and peace from God, the father, our Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> after all, in the beginning of his letters and churches in general, Paul only wrote grace and peace in his greetings. And we see that in Romans 1, 7, 1 Corinthians 1, 3, 2 Corinthians 1, 2, Galatians 1, 3, Ephesians 1, 2, Philippians 1, 2, Colossians 1, 2, 1 Thessalonians 1, 1, 2 Thessalonians 1, 2. But when he wrote to the pastors, Timothy and Titus, he was compelled to greet them with grace, mercy, and peace. I thought that was really interesting and did you ever notice that the one thing, as Spurgeon continues to say, did you ever notice that the one thing about Christian ministers that they need even more mercy than other people? Although everybody needs mercy, ministers need it more than anybody else. And so we do, so we do for, remember Spurgeon was a pastor, for if we were, we are not faithful, we shall be greater sinners even than our hearers. And it needs much grace for us always to be faithful and much mercy will be required to cover our shortcomings. So I shall take those three things to myself, grace, mercy, and peace. You have the two, grace and peace, but I need mercy more than any of you. So I take it from my Lord's loving hand, and I will trust and not be afraid despite all my shortcomings and feebleness and blunders and mistakes in the course of my whole ministry. And I just thought that's really cool. So I, a lot of the quotes I quote, post on the um, group are from Spurgeon. It just shows you his humility. Um, and so I just, I really do love that, like that he saw that, but he, he, he was more talking about giving mercy to himself as a pastor. And so again, we are our own worst critics, right? Um, and so, and we, that's the one thing that we need to remember is to give ourselves mercy. You know, we can ask for grace, peace, and mercy, but we also need to give that to ourselves as well. Um, Okay, so verses three through four, five, Paul and Timothy both had a heritage of faith. When Paul said he prayed for Timothy continually, night and day, he used a common expression in continual prayer. Timothy was on his mind in his prayers throughout each day. Um, I mean, he, he, he was in jail and, you know, he didn't have a whole lot to do. Again, we just established that. So prayer was something that he probably did a lot, um, which again, he wasn't, he was using his time wisely, right? So sometimes when we, are at home and we think, oh, we have nothing to do. So we turn on the TV or something like that. Um, we can actually take that time instead and use that for prayer. Use the time for, you know, reaching out, writing a letter. I mean, I'm saying this to myself. So remember, like I think Stacy said, whenever you're pointing your finger, you have three pointing back to you last week. That's what I'm saying. You know, the, these are the things that, again, um, we can be doing with our time and everything. And so again, he, here he talks about which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. I'm going to talk about this in just a minute when we get to the next section. Um, so remember this passage or this verse um, for the next section that whenever I go over the stories. Um, Timothy's genuine faith was due in no small measure to his godly upbringing and the influence of his grandmother and mother. And this is going to tie in with the story that I have. It's going to go hand in hand at the end. Um, I think it's verse, well, one of the next sections. And then verse six, the phrase keep ablaze the gift of God did not mean that Timothy had let go, let the fire go out. It was a call to action, lest sluggishness set in on gift of God. We can go to first Timothy four, four, the laying of hands probably refers to Timothy's ordination. This passage focuses on Paul's part in the event, while 1 Timothy 4, 14 focuses on the involvement of the full group of elders. People are at all different places. Uh, for some, the last thing they need to hear is you need to be bolder because it is not their problem. Many other others come from the place where they need to hear, stir up the gift of God, which is in you. Be bold, get going, go for it. Timothy was the second type. 
he needed that, you know, that umph, that, you know, push in the push in the rear end, as they say, which is in you through the laying of my hands. God used the laying of the hands to communicate spiritual gifts to Timothy. This is not the only way God gives gifts, but it is a common way in a way that we should never neglect. It is a good thing to have others pray for us. And as that God would give us gifts that might be used to bless and build up the family of God. And so again, those spiritual gifts we talked about, we've talked about in the past, we know God gives us all different gifts. There's no one greater than the other. Um, but sometimes he will take us and when he will challenge us to use a gift that we're not used to using, like Sue had said earlier, she had to use the gift that she was not used to using, but she was able to use it. And cause God, you know, took her out of her comfort zone, but yet still used her in such a cool way. And so that was really awesome. Um, and then verse seven, the spirit here probably refers to the Holy spirit. The Greek word translated fearfulness is used in extra biblical literature to refer to a person who fled from battle. It is a strong ter term for cowardness. Boldness, not coward cowardice, is a mark of the Holy Spirit. Um, we are not created to live, or sorry, fear and timidity will keep us from using the gifts God gives. God wants us to each take his power, his love, and his calm thinking and overcome fear to be used of him with all the gifts he gives. We are not created to live in fear. And so many people right now are so fearful. And God created us to trust in him and rely on him, not on man. We are to trust in him. Um, and so again, that is something that keeps on coming up in scripture because I think we, they even struggled with it here. And then now, you know, it's like, we're still struggling with it. This is still a, a way Satan is coming in and he's going to keep on coming in if we allow him, right? If we keep on letting that happen, he's, it's, if it works, if it's, or if it's not broke, why fix it? You know, he's working right now. He's really working overtime to really allow fear to kick in. And we just got it. We got to uh, just remember what God's word says. We have to remember that we're to have faith and to trust in him in that. So there's so much in that section. Does anybody have anything? Cause there's a lot in the next section, we're going to have even more. So <laughs> nothing there was one thing i um i listened to a woman talk about that um verse six um the stir up and she, she like she had had words from, uh sorry the baby uh she was talking about how there is a bone in our ear called the stir up bone and so she kind of talked about how when you you know stir up the gift that got, or, you know, whatever that says, um, you're one, you're either speaking the word of God to others or you're hearing the word of God. And so, you know, it just kind of, she, she found it. Um, I just thought it was interesting. She thought it was interesting about how, um, you know, it's all about hearing and there's a bone in your ear called the stirrup bone. And so it's just kind of interesting how that kind of, um, you know, worked together. So I thought, yeah, cool. that's really cool. Same with hearing the, you mentioned something about, you know, listening to music and praying about it. And I found now that even just casually listening to music doesn't have to be worship music either. It, I tend to now hear spiritual things and songs that aren't necessarily spiritual, mm. like gentle reminders, or I don't know. It just like, seems to be like or a random commercial on TV. And it was just like, huh wait oh we talked about this <laughs> last week just be listening and so like that that I I enjoy I thought that I say speaking of the details from last week but it's like yeah those little things you start seeing them through your day or how someone says something in an email at work you know oh wait yeah oh you know like someone had messed up a meeting and I just wrote back I'm like hey we all need grace things happen trust me I seriously am thinking about changing my title on one of them to herder of cats, because that's what it feels like most days is that I'm trying to herd a bunch of cats together to schedule a meeting. And they wrote back and they're like, no one's been nice to me. They've all been yelling at me. And I'm like, the things you can't control. It's, it's okay. And Oh, thank you. That meant a lot. And it was like, it took 12 seconds to type it, you know? So 
back to the whole living in fear and all that. It's like just that little bit of grace. And sure enough, going to the grocery store last week, two biblical conversations ended up happening with two different people that, you know, it's like, no, I don't want people. But conversation started. We ended up ha- having this fantastic conversation, you know, and it's like, it's funny now because the thing is, is at the end, people pull their masks down, smile at you and say, hi, I'm so-and-so. So that's like, like the, like the secret code of saying hello now is show you who I am and you're going to see the whole of it. And it all started because my shoes were really clean. He's just like, I have never seen shoes that clean. I'm like, um, they're new. (laughs) Very (laughs) cool. Yeah. It's just some random, but yeah. It's so awesome. Very cool. Okay. We'll go ahead and. Does somebody have something? I thought somebody was saying something. Okay, Stacey, if you don't mind doing eight through 12, this is going to be a really good section. Eight through 12. Okay, so so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has served us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it is now being been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted or what I have entrusted to him until that day. Okay. Verse eight, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. If Timothy took the courage God gave, he would not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. We often fail to understand that it wasn't easy to follow a crucified master. Today, we have sanitized Jesus and disinfected the cross, making it all safe. But in the day Paul wrote this, it would seem strange indeed to follow a crucified man and call him savior. Think of Jesus' teaching. If you want to be great, be the servant of all. Be like a child, like a slave, like the younger, like the last instead of the first. This is a testimony some would be ashamed of. Paul knew that the plan of God in Jesus Christ seemed foolish to many, but he also knew it was living, active power of God to save souls and transform lives. Paul would not be ashamed of it, and neither should Timothy or us today. The power of the spirit of power or of courage and resolution to encounter difficulties and dangers, the spirit of of love to God, which will carry us through the opposition we may meet with. As Jacob made nothing of the hard service he was to endure for Rachel, the spirit of love to God will set us above the fear of man and all the hurt that a man can do do to us. In the spirit of a sound mind, quiet quietness of mind, a peaceable enjoyment of ourselves, for we are oftentimes discouraged in our way And work by the creatures of our own fancy and imagination, which a sober, solid thinking mind would abbreviate and would easily answer. Okay, so verses 9 and 10, that was a quote I found from a commentary. Verses 9 and 10, these verses summarize the gospel which believers suffer. They serve as a reminder of the power of God on whom we rely. The use of exalted language suggests that Paul was also arguing that so glorious a message was worth suffering for. Goodness, this is going on all over the world right now. Um, verse 10 does not give you, does it not give you so much comfort? Um, we will one day, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just wonder how much longer we will have the freedoms that we do with as Christians. And one day we will have to decide, you know, what do we, what do we believe? Um, but this is not the end. As believers, we get eternal life with our Lord and Savior. So why do we fear again when we have nothing to fear when it comes to death? Again, these are the things that I just keep on, like, it just keeps on coming in my mind. And I just think we're like, what is the worst that can happen? You know? And, um, and maybe it is because I've been in like countries where it is, I mean, it's illegal or not illegal, but you can get persecuted and you see their faith and you're just like, man, we are so comforted, like have so much comfort here. And, um, Then verse 12, the phrase, these things refers to Paul's imprisonment and impending death. He was confident that God would protect either gospel, what has been entrusted to me or his own soul, what I have entrusted to him. Um, My either way, it was this confidence and God that prevented Paul from being ashamed. His boldness 
came not from self-confidence, but from God confidence. Remember that. I love that. That's like such a great quote. Again, remember Paul struggled, you know, in Romans, we saw that. Do I, should I be here? Do I not? I, I mean, I really want to be with Jesus, but I also need to be here so I can tell people about him. That struggle was real in his life. And, um, I love this verse. And actually, um, it was crazy because whenever I did this, me and Faith actually watched God's Not Dead 2 last week. I don't know. Have y'all, has anybody seen the God's Not Dead movies? Okay. So Karen, you will really, really like the four. Did you see four yet? See, you, you, because you homeschool. So you will really, really like four because four what? is about homeschooling. What? Yes. What's it coming out? It, well, we went and saw it in the movies. Tuesday night. So what? yeah, yeah. You will really, really like it. So okay, we'll that because I know there's a lot of laws with homeschooling now. Yeah. It, and that's what it hit. It that's exactly what it hit. So, um, it was really, it's, it's really good. So anyway, God's not dead too. Um, there, I'll kind of give you a preface. So what I'm telling you is not going to ruin the movie for you, but I would highly recommend you go back and watch all those because they're actually written from real laws that have like real court cases. So a lot of these movies were taken from court cases and they kind of took all of these court cases and put them into a movie. So they like, you know, at the end you can just see court case, court case, court case, court case um, on all of these. But the teacher had to deny God or, and, and she would have been fine. And, and she, you know, but the thing that she said in it is, is she is not ashamed of the gospel. And that was her main thing. She was just like, I can't deny something I'm not ashamed of. I'm not ashamed of what I did. And so she, again, we have to have that mindset. We, we should not be ashamed of, of the gospel. And one day we may be in a place where we cannot be ashamed of the gospel. Are we strong enough to withstand that persecution? I think of Rachel Scott, again, she was the one in Columbine where, you know, the two guys, came in and had guns and asked her is she, you know can she de- will she deny christ and she said no and then they said well go be with him they shot her in the head um these these are things that do happen and i think sometimes we're just we're not we don't we don't ever hear them you know much and everything so here's two stories that i wanted to read and one goes with this And then the next one will go with um, the verse that I said earlier. Okay, so this is, I whenever I I open this up and I kid you not, I opened up to the title and it said extreme fear. And so I knew then that this, I had to read it. I was like, oh my gosh, like that's God. He's so cool. How does he do this? Because my husband had did a, a, um, a small group lesson on like martyrs and so he gave me the pages and I didn't even look at the pages he gave me I just looked at the book and the minute I opened it it was this this and I was like okay I'm gonna find so I found two and one was this that was because I just opened right up to it and then the other one was for the um, passage it used the passage that we were going over so um Laos Lu um the unwritten code that's where this is at L-A-O-S which I should have looked that up I have no idea where that is Um, And Lou is the name. L-U is the name of the person. Um, The unwritten code of the police was clear. If you catch the kumu of other tribesmen converting to Christianity, arrest them. If you catch any, anyone evangelizing the tribesmen, kill him. Okay. So this is a true story. This is out of the voice of the martyr. So I was telling y'all about after Lou had been shackled at the hands and feet and shamefully marched through the village, the communist police threw him in a pit. We will let you go, they said, when 100 Christians in your village renounced their conversion to Christianity, but they were unable to find believers willing to turn their backs on Christ. Then tragedy struck the police. One officer's son broke both legs in an accident. His other son became critically ill. The officer who had beaten and harassed new Christians suddenly died of a heart attack. Other officials fearfully pulled Lou from the pit and allowed him to return home. Government authorities were too frightened to take action against the Christians in the village after seeing what happened to their leader. Seeing God's show of power, more Kamu became believers. Where there had been 100 Christians, now there were 700. They even sent Christians out to tell other villagers about Jesus. While the Laotian authorities were controlled by their fear, the Christians in Southeast Asia overcame theirs. Fear is one of the most basic human motivations. It drives out, it drives stock markets and fuel wars. It unruly energizes, can be used for great harm or channeled for great good. 
Professional boxers are often told fear is their friend. Fear can make them better fighters. It keeps them alert. It, sen it sensitizes their determination. In the same way, God can use our fears and make us better fighters for his cause. And we're going to learn a lot about that next week in Fle um, Fleeman. Whenever, or sorry, not Fleeman, but we're going to learn about that next week in the reading that we have. Um, whenever we are afraid, we have the potential to do the impossible. Why? That which is impossible is our own strength is made possible with God's help. Fear makes us more likely to forsake our, our own resources and rely on God instead. In this way, extreme fear can lead to extreme faith. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 27, 1. Okay, the other one is extreme mother. So we talked about Eunice and um, Lewis. Did I say that right? Is that right? Lewis and Eunice. Yeah. I was, okay, so yeah. It's, yeah, okay. So this is from that passage where this is England, Susanna Wesley. Susanna Wesley was born in 1668 in England when the state church and government crushed any form of Christian worship or education not controlled by them. This determined Christian women began programs of Christian education for adults in her kitchen and daily with her children. In 1662, six years before Susanna was, was born, the English government passed a law forcing the state's church's book of common prayer and all worship services. 2,000 clergy were forced to resign. In 1664, a law was passed forbidding more than five people who were not family members to worship together without a state official. In 1665, the Five Mile Act was passed aimed at nonconformist ministers who were forbidden to come within five miles where they had founded a congregation. This law was upheld for almost 150 years. Soldiers destroyed meeting houses and took away furniture and Christian books. 5,000 nonconformist Christians died in prison. Although Susanna was associated at, at times with the official church, she refused to be a Sunday only Christian. Her angry neighbors burned her fields and stabbed the three cows they gave, they gave milk to her family. They called her children the, t the little devils. One of her children, John Wesley, the founder of Methodist, led a great spiritual awakening in England. He had learned perseverance from his mother. Many believe the reason England did not experience a bloody revolution in the same way that France had was terrorized is due to the Christian revival that began among the poor in Great Britain. This spiritual revival was led in part by John Wesley, who also championed practical help, education, jobs, and food. Did the influence of his mother, Susanna Wesley, help to save England? Your, influ your influence for Christ does change history. Even if we don't have biological parents or grandparents like the Wesleys who passed down the Christian faith to us, God gave us a spiritual family to nurture and love us. Who is your spiritual mother or father? Someone who taught you about Christ. To whom can you be a spiritual brother or sister? I have been reminded of sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. 2 Timothy 1.5. So those are just two examples um, that we see of not being ashamed of the gospel and and not being persuaded against denouncing, like they're not being persuaded to denounce God. And um, Richard Wormbrandt is another great one. He's the one that actually started Voice of the Martyrs. I feel like or something about him started it. And he has a really great story too, which there's a movie we saw the previews of coming out. And I'm really excited about his wife because she she sounded like a, like awesome, um, just a really godly woman. So again, Paul set the example we have his example to live by and all of these people in this book all of the martyrs that we know of they're all not willing they're not going to back down because i really feel like god wrote this passage in here because we need to stand on that we need to remember not to be ashamed of what god's word says not to back down from his word says um until that day paul had in mind either the day he would see jesus or the day jesus would come for paul Paul and Timothy both in, lived in such an awareness of the day that Paul didn't need to identify it more than that. The day was precious to Paul because he had committed everything to Jesus. To the degree we commit our life and all we are and have to Jesus, to the same degree that day will be precious to us. Again, this is totally giving God control of our lives, all of it, every aspect of it, finances, physical, you know, mental, all of that we put in his hands. And we allow him to have it. 
Um, and we just can't back down. And I just, I think that this, my neighbor is like a go-getter. She's going to fight every cause imaginable. Um, she's just amazing. She texts me all the time, you know, like, and, um, I, I admire her for that. And I was actually texting her today about next week's, um, passages, you know, kind of getting her wisdom on that because I was like, you know, um, but it was really cool. And we have those people who we can really learn from and everything in our lives too. But most of all, we put Jesus first and foremost. And, and then whenever his word changes our hearts, that's what changes us. And in that change, that's where we go out and we proclaim the gospel and we are not ashamed of it. Okay, so that was a lot. And I mean, I love those stories. Those stories were amazing to me. Um, and I loved the fact that God fought for them, right? God fights for us, y'all. He fights for us. But sometimes it means us fighting for him first and everything. So um, does anybody have anything on that? Laos is in Southeast Asia, by the way. Yeah. I wonder where, though. I wonder oh, where I, at. I had the map up, but... Here, I'll get it back in a second. Because I love Asia. That's like, we love, we love Asia. We love going to Asia. I think it's north of uh, Thailand. Yeah, it's the border between Thailand and Vietnam. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we were right, it we were right, right, up, right at, at times. It, uh, Myanmar's to the left, Laos is in the middle, China, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand and then Laos is in the middle. Okay. Wow. The light yeah. yellow part. Is like I want to do that and like expand it. <laughs> there. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. I have a, a spiritual mother. Um, growing up, Mrs. Ko, I always call her Mrs. Ko. You know how you get older and you start calling your your elders by their first name. I never could do that. I mm. never could. She's 90, going to be 92, or she already is 92 now. But um, she was a, a piano player in our church, a Sunday school, um, mostly piano player. And um, my piano teacher growing up, and um, I can't play worth a lick now, but um, that's not her fault. And um, so, but I joined the military and she, she was always praying for me, you know, and um, it was always good to see her when I went home on vacation or on leave. And then I got pregnant um, out of wedlock. And of course, you know, being a, a Baptist, that's ingrained in me and not too um, you know, pregnancy out of wedlock. And the first thing what you're going to do, it, you know, well, I wouldn't even get it, think about getting an abortion. So, and um, so I went home and after I retired, Brad was like three years old, my son at that time. And, you know, she was the Sunday school teacher for the women at the church. And of course I went right straight back to the church I grew up in you know, um, and she was talking about, um, uh, uh, oh, I forget what she was, what the thing was. Oh, um, I can't remember, but, you know, I broke down and I cried and I said, you know, people, you know, are taught, I think people talk about me and things like that. And she goes, Juanita, don't worry about it. God will take care of them. You just take care of you and your son. And after that, I was so peaceful and comfortable with my situation. And, um, you know, she is still my spiritual mother. You know, they, when we left to come down to Texas, they, you know, gave us a, uh, the church gave us a going away little thing. And, and it was just so nice. And to this day, I called her a couple months ago. Um, she lost her husband and she's living with her daughter. And I called her a couple months ago and she goes, oh, Juanita, it's so good to hear from you. I pray for you all the time, you know, how are you and Brad? And, you know, and then, you know, I said, 
I just have to tell you that, you know, you're my second mother. Mm. And she just started to cry. And I said, she goes, oh, thank you for telling me that. That means so much to me, you know, and we were both crying. And I said, well, I need to go. So I'll call you later. She was okay. And her daughter texted me and she goes, boy, my mom is still crying, girl, <laughs> she said, you know, but that woman, I love her just like my mother, my mother. And I don't want to really want to get into that, but you know, she was there all the time, but she, anyway, but yeah, so um, Mrs. Coe, she is uh, still be Mrs. Coe to me till, you know, even though we're closer and closer in age. Yeah. Right. We were always that far away, but you know, being a teenager and her in her thirties, you wouldn't, you know, but now she's 90 and I'm 66. So, so we're closer, but she's still Mrs. Co. So uh, I love it. This you call her Mama Co. Yeah, really. So yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, it's so cool though, to have someone that, you know, it will be always there if you need anything. Very cool. I love it. Um, I had a couple comments. Uh, one to piggyback off of Juanita, I had a special mommy too, but she's passed. But um, she was a spiritual special mama, so I know what it's like to have one of those. It's really nice. I wish I could find another. Mm -hmm. um, comment I wanted to make was on the the fear of talking about Jesus and. That's, I've been dealing with that personally for the last week and a half, maybe, because I have a side business and I do videos. But my, besides doing, when I do a video, I also at the end have a spiritual devotion or, uh, and uh, just last night, yesterday, I, th I was thinking, um, maybe I'm going too heavy on that. And so uh, the Lord's been prompting me through this. And through some reading I've done, no, Janie, you just keep on doing what you're doing, you know? So mm -hmm. uh, I want to encourage everyone too. And also I want to encourage everyone because I think we talked about being in the scripture and having your time with Jesus. It gives you, I don't know what it is, but it gives you that confidence to go out and talk to people. It really does. Yeah. And <laughs> And my second comment is something we talked about earlier, but it's kind of in what we talked about in a way, but in the last month, maybe I've noticed there's been so much hell and damnation and the end of the world and stuff like that. And I read uh, someone, a quote for someone or someone wrote something, which I think is good for all, all of us to remember is God, Jesus intends for us to be happy every day regardless of what's going to happen to tomorrow when we're supposed to live each day to its fullest and that's our main purpose as christians but as a christian we are to be aware of the end times and we're we're supposed to be no see the signs that it's happening so uh i think a lot of the end times might be a little bit of theatrical stuff to get us going you know and but personally I don't think we should put a great deal of emphasis we all know it's going to happen and if we're a Christian it, we're happy about it you know it's nothing but good for us but in the wrong run Jesus just wants us to be happy every day and he helps us that then if I can I have a plug if it's all right I'll say it and then uh, Shannon, you can message me and tell me, no, you can't do that. But anyway, I do have a, uh, I have a service uh, page and it's for depression, people who are lonely and things like that. And in November, I'm starting a book review and it is by um, Joyce Meyer and it's called Battlefield of the Mind. And I love it. So um, I'm doing my uh, studies. I'm making teaching notes right now. And I'm researching other people and authors. So that's, that's going to start with me um, the 1st of November. So you can message me, Janie Good, or you can go to my 
my page, which is Jane's Place BFF on Facebook. I hope that was okay to do because I feel like it was in the interest of Jesus. So, and you guys, I really thank you for all your prayers because I, I really had a really bad three months. So, uh, thanks so much. We're we're glad you're back for sure. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. But we're glad you're back for sure. I am. I am too. Stacy, do you want to go ahead and read versus uh, finish off the chapter? Because I do have to do Titus, Titus overview, which I forgot about. Okay. okay. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Examples of disloyalty and loyalty. You know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including oh boy, Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord show mercy to the household of Onesiphorus, on, on because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he was in Rome, he searched hard for me until he found me. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. You know very well in how many ways he helped me in Ephesus. Way to go, Stacy! Just read it with confidence. Just read it with confidence. <laughs> um, it's okay to pray while you're reading scripture, right? Because that just happened. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Talk about like, like the spiritual, like the triple play right there. Reading scripture, praying scripture, receiving help. It's all just, woohoo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, goodness. Oh, uh, that's good. Um, verse 13, faith and love must go together. It is not enough to believe the sound words and to give an assent a to them, but we must love them, believe their truth and love their goodness. And we must propagate the form of sound words and love speaking the truth and love. And then we get that from Ephesians 4.15 as well. Verse 14, the gospel, it is committed to us to be preserved pure and entire and to be transmitted to those <clears throat> who shall come after us. And we must keep it and not contribute anything to the corruption of its purity, the weakening of its power, or the diminishing of its perfection. Keep it by the Holy Spirit that dwelleth in us. Through the gospel, the good news of who Jesus is and what he did for us can be thought of as links connected together in a beautiful chain of God's work. God's plan of salvation began for us in eternity past, before time began. It continued for the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. It came to us when he saved us and called us, and it continues as we live our holy calling. It will one day show itself in immor immortality, eternal life. And then verse 15, Asia was the name of the Roman province in which Ephesus was located. Key people who could have supported Paul had failed to do so. We know nothing about Figulus and Hermonagus. I don't know, Stacy. I think you said it better than I did. This highlight the bleak situation in which God, or which Paul found himself. Perhaps this is one reason why Timothy, the loved, the faithful one, was such a source of joy for Paul at this time. Um, okay, so I'm going to read this really fast. Um, also, let's see. Well, let me read this first. Okay, the Bible and women. This kind of goes in with like what we talked about last week. And whenever I saw this, I was like, this is really good. The Bible, Bible highlight are highly esteems women. It teaches that they are co-bearers of the image of God, that he crowned them with honor and glory and gave them charge to exercise dominion over the earth. Women, along with men, have the enormous dignity, privilege, and responsibility to put the glory of God on display. The Bible highly esteems women, but unfortunately, women do not always highly esteem the Bible. Some disregard it. They are apathetic and lackadaisical, unwilling to exert the effort to sharpen their Bible study habits and unconcerned about applying the word of God to their lives. Others, others disrespect it. They think that they have the right to choose which parts are or are not applicable to women today. Others deride it, claiming that since the writers were exclusively men, scripture is flawed and insufficient for women. The tendency for women to disrespect and deride the Bible is particularly pre prevalent in our post-feminist society, even among those who claim to follow Christ. Two women who had an enormous respect for the Bible were Eunice and Lois, Timothy's mother and grandmother. Paul credits them with Timothy's conversion. He also credits them with carefully teaching Timothy scripture and doctrine. 
Timothy's father was not a believer, so he didn't contribute Timothy's spiritual training. It is Eunice and Lois that acquainted Timothy with the sacred scriptures, taught him what they, they meant, instructed him in the ways of the Lord, and ensured that he received instruction for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Paul reminds Timothy about his mother's and grandmother's attitudes towards scripture and their skill in studying, understanding, and applying it. He wrote the well-known verses about all scripture being inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, to make us competent and equipped us for the work, good work in the context of the outstanding job that Eunice and Lois did equipping Timothy. These two women did not disregard, disrespect, or deride the Bible. They held it in the highest esteem. Um, in order to influence for Christ, those who are in our relation, relational sphere, women need to have the same regard for the scripture that Eunice and Lo Lois held. Had We need to be students of the Bible and diligently study it so we can correctly teach the word of truth, and that's 2 Timothy 2.15, correctly teaching, cutting straight holding or a straight course, doing right, rightly dividing, suggests that imagery of a farmer cutting a straight furrow, a, building, a builder cutting a stone, or a tent maker cutting the cloth. Precise, faultless workmanship is indicated. Women have a responsibility to develop their ability to handle scripture correctly. Those who fail to do so are susceptible to error. Women who highly esteem the Bible and have a good grasp of, do all of doctrine will be able to teach what is good and have a tremendous impact of mentoring their friends and children in the ways of the Lord. And that's Timothy 2, 3 through 4. So this was written by Mary Casian. I don't know who that is, but I really like that because I do think sometimes we, um, Janie, what you had said earlier about being happy, we are to be happy in the Lord, but we, we're not always going to be happy. Um, you know, and I always tell people who get married, marriage is not meant to make you happy. It's meant to make you holy. So just know that when you're going in, you know, and it's just the fact, yes, you were going to find contentment and happiness in it, but we can only find that in Christ. And, um, we just, and again, we do need to be careful what we listen to and who we listen to and make sure it's biblical. Um, and Janie, it's fine that you had said what you did, but I, I mean, Joyce Meyer, I'm not a huge fan of, and stuff. So I, and I don't mind you saying that at all, but just make sure what you are reading is definitely biblical and um, making sure that what you can, it's fine to read that, but just make sure you can take scripture and compare it with what you're reading and everything. So this, but this passage right here are what this lady had wrote about this is so true, but y'all, we are women and we can, we are, we have that ability to tell others about Jesus in raising our kids to love the Lord now, will they all, will they follow it? Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. We're called to raise them though, to follow the word of God. Um, and so we can learn that from Lois and Eunice, because look what happened because they raised Timothy that way. Now, Timothy was able to go to a church and he proclaimed Christ in such a way that others learned from Timothy and everything. So you never know the impact that you are making. We never know the impact. Janie, you don't know the impact you're making in your group. And so you, you know, Sue, you don't know the impact you made by leading that, you know, you, you don't know the impact Stacy, whenever you go to the store, you don't know the impact you're making on these people and stuff. And so a lot of these things, you're making the impact on people and you don't know what you're doing, but God has that for us, um, for such a time as this, to be able to be that impact for people who we come encounter with. Um, so don't lose heart and don't lose, just, but make sure we keep the Bible the first and foremost thing. Um, Titus overview, we'll go on this really quickly. Um, Paul wrote to Titus and the, this is a really short book, y'all. I could not believe how short it is. There's not a whole lot in the um, chapters either. It's very short and sweet. Um, Titus, who's mentioned by name 13 times in the New Testament. Um, the title in the Greek New Testament literally reads to Titus along with first and second Timothy. These letters to Paul's sons in the faith are traditionally called the pastoral epistles. He most likely wrote to Titus in response to a letter from Titus or a report from Crete. What in contrast to several Paul's other letters, such as those, the churches in the Rome, Galatia, the book of Titus does not focus on explaining or defending doctrine. Paul had full confidence in Titus theological understanding and convictions evidenced by the fact that he entrusted him with such a demanding ministry, except for the warning about false teachers and Judaizers. The letter gives no theological correction, strongly suggests that Paul also had confidence in the doctor, doctrinal 
grounding of most church members there, despite the fact that majority of them were new believers. Doctrines that this, this epistle affirms include God's sovereign election or believers, his saving grace, Christ's deity and second coming, Christ's substitutionary atonement, and the generation of renewing of believers by the Holy Spirit. He wrote this in 62 to 64 AD, and where he most likely wrote Titus, or Paul most likely wrote Titus served with Paul on both the second and third missionary journeys. Titus, like Timothy, had become a beloved disciple and fellow worker in the gospel. Paul's last mention of Titus in 2 Timothy 4.10 reports that he had gone from ministry to Dalmatia, modern Yugoslavia, and the letter probably was delivered by Zenus and Apollos in 313. Although Luke did not mention Titus by name in the book of Acts, it seems probable that Titus, a Gentile, Galatians 2.3, met and may have been led to faith in Christ by Paul in 1.4. Before or during the apostles' first missionary journey, later Titus ministered for a period of time with Paul on the island of Crete and was left behind to continue and strengthen the work. And we see that 1.5 after Artemis and Tychius arrived to direct the ministry there. Paul wanted Titus to join him in the city of Nicopolis in the province of Achaia and Greece and stay through the winter. Why, why did he write this? God and Christ are regularly referred to as Savior, and the saving plan is so emphasized in 2, 11 through 14 that indicated the major thrust of the epistles is that of equipping the churches of Crete for effective evangelism. This preparation required godly leaders who not only would shepherd believers under their care, but also would equip those Christians for evangelizing their pagan neighbors who had been characterized by one of their own famous natives as liars, evil beasts, and lazy gluttons in order to gain a hearing of the gospel among such people. The believer's primary preparation for evangelization oh, was to live among themselves in the unargumental testimony of righteous, loving, selfless, and godly lives, and mark contract to the debauched lives as the false teachers. How they behaved with reference to governmental authorities and believers was also crucial to their testimony. And then several themes repeat themselves throughout Titus. They include works, soundness, and faith, doctrine, and salvation. And so we're going to see a lot of that in Titus. It is a small book, but it is impacted with a lot. And there is going to be some things that we're going to question. And there's going to be some things that are really going to kind of put some, you know, tip our, touch our toes, you know. And so there's definitely going to be um, some things in it that we are going to kind of question. And, you know, and again, pray when you re read it and everything. So sorry, y'all. That was a lot to put in. Does anybody have anything to say on any of those? And on the section I just read too about uh, the th 13 through 18, that kind of jumped into Titus really fast, but. I um, just wanted to say a few things. Um, it kind of all ties into a lot of things that were said today, just throughout. Um, as I was reading, or when you were talking about being ashamed of the gospel and then reading yesterday and today's reading, the, the phrase sprinkle on a little Jesus kept coming in. Cause I feel like that's what people do. They're like, Oh, I'm going to sprinkle a little Jesus in this part of my life and sprinkle a little Jesus over here. And I mean, when all reality, what we need is he's, he is everything. And like he, we surrender all of it to him. And, um, what you were saying about, um, being happy or, you know, opposed to not being happy, we're obviously told um, we're going to have trouble in the world. And um, I think part of being a godly woman is even though you're walking through a hard season, um, people look at you and they're like, how are you doing? How are you being okay? Yeah. Um, even though you know, they know your struggle, they know what you're walking through, but you're still like, you have a peace about you. And so it's not about oh. being happy, but it's about choosing to trust in the Lord. Um, and yeah, I'm sure you, you kind of did say that, but that's just my take on it. Um, and sometimes I feel like a fraud because oh. I have been in a really hard season lately with homeschool. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, oh. Especially with her this one yeah she I'm it is so hard um I know, I know so pray for me for one but also just you know <laughs> I have to keep going either way that's cool 
We'll definitely pray, Brittany. And I can't imagine, I just cannot imagine. Karen, I don't know if you can maybe encourage Brittany or, you know, tell her, you know, that is something that, you know, I, I don't know. I just think that y'all are both, I know, how, does anybody else homeschool? Did anybody else homeschool or homeschool? Sue, anybody else? I am not called to homeschool. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I am, I told my mentors a huge, they actually run the local homeschool. They help, they ran the local homeschool like organization here or whatever. And I just told her from the very beginning, don't try to talk me into it. That's all I got to say. I will do private school before I do homeschool. <laughs> if I have to cut the budget somehow, but I admire y'all though. I do. I admire y'all so much. My sister-in-law homeschooled. So Brittany, I know it can be hard, but Karen, I know you can pour into her really fast. Yeah. It, it, Brittany, just keep trusting God because God called you to homeschool. And since you're obeying him and homeschooling, just keep asking God, please just give me the strength. Give me the peace. and all of a sudden he will do it It, in the most unexpected, craziest ways. God will do it for you and he'll get you through. And I just, every single day I open these books and I'm like, I have to teach high school biology. I have to teach algebra. I'm like, I flunked geometry when I was in high school, but yet God did it. I don't know how he does. He always provides like I'm teaching ancient history. That's crazy, but I'm learning along with her and God does provide. He will be there. Just keep trusting him. Don't let go of him. I don't know what else to say really quick. I could go on forever, but there's so much things, but just, just two seconds, just keep praying and keep trusting. Don't look away. And yeah, you're going to have directions. I have thousands of distractions all day long, but I don't know. Just keep trusting him. And Leslie, she homeschools as well. So, um, oh, cool. and so y'all need to go watch God tonight then for That'll give you, that'll really give you some umph to do what you're doing. So (laughs) you're like, as God's not dead four, as in there's four of those movies. Yeah. You should watch one, two, three. I've seen the first one. I didn't, I I didn't realize there was four of them. Yeah. They're really good. We, we kind of binge watched them because we were like me and faith watched two. And then me and my husband watched three before we went and saw four. Um, and just to remind us what had happened, they're really good movies though. I mean, they're really good. They're really relevant too. Um, So, and I think four really kind of ties in with next week's lesson, like next week's reading um, and today's reading. So I think it really does tie into it. Um, It goes in with it and everything. So, Um, okay. Does anybody have anything else before we end? Real quick, I'll try to do this real quick, but thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that. It was, uh, even before you you made that comment, I was thinking I was going to ask you if sometime we could talk about how to, uh, admonish fellow Christians when we see that maybe they need to be straightened out and put back on the right road because that's hard to do it's very hard to do and I'd like to learn how to do it in the right way so that's a thought but then um, also I want you to know that I'm really started on this teaching um, teaching thing because I feel led to do it but my major major concern is that when I teach that it is all scriptural and comes straight from the Bible. And uh, and there's somewhere in the Bible that says test, you must test the spirit. Mm -hmm. So I have to to, uh, judge what I hear and see and read according to God's word. And I pray every day that God gives me the ability to do that. So I'd like to reassure you there. And I guess the reason I like Joyce is she was the first one that was on the scene with me and she's taught me so, so much, but I, I understand the concern. I know there's a lot of concern with her. And uh, I wanted to make one more comment is there's a difference between happiness and joy. Yes. yes. Happiness cannot be done in the Valley, but joy can. And that's all I have to say. No, I love that. And that, that's so funny that you say that because I almost said that earlier. Um, Sydney, who joined us in the very beginning, um, one of the girls I mentor, um, mm-hmm. I call her definitely my spiritual daughter. And her thing, her theme is always, I choose joy. And, yeah. and that's the thing, even no matter how hard her walk is, she, mm-hmm. she reminds herself a lot. Yeah. I choose joy. I'm choosing joy in this situation. I'm choosing joy. 
And so Janie, it's so good that you said that because it is true. We have to, it's a choice though. You can choose. And that's what I think of like with Paul and whenever he's writing these letters and I'm like, he chose Jesus. And and by choosing Jesus, he chose the joy of the, of, of the Lord and not in his circumstances because all of us have different circumstances. All of us have different seasons. Brittany, your season right now is definitely different than a lot of our seasons. But what's so cool though, is you have a group of women here that can pray for you, but also who also know what you're going through and everything. And so God doesn't leave you to just go in the wilderness by yourself. And, and again, it's like, there's so many of us that have different seasons and walks and God is using that. And that's what I want to encourage y'all. You know, every one of y'all are used in such cool ways. Um, and so just make, you know, lean on the Lord. He's going to give you what you need. Um, but I just, I love how every one of us are in different stages and yet we can still come together and we can still encourage one another. So I love that and um, everything. So it's been really cool. Really cool to see. As someone that went to school to be a teacher, ah, my advice to you is when you do your lesson plan, make your lesson plan for your lesson. Always make a plan B and a plan C. Uh-huh. If you teach your lesson and they don't get it, you're going to have to circle back to where you were. Gotcha. But if you get it and they get it right then and you're in a teachable moment, always kind of know what's coming next in the pipeline. And then you can just hop to it and take advantage of that teachable moment. Thank there, you. I, there, I just saved you a whole lot of money and going to college. You sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and I miss it. And I mean, my babies are all in college now. Oh, yikes. But all of a sudden with everything going on in the world, I, I want to homeschool someone's kid. <laughs> Oh. That's what I keep being called to do. Now I just got to find that kid. The search continues. And unfortunately, I took all my teaching stuff and took it to my parents' house a month and a half ago. Because I was like, it's sitting here doing nothing. All the kids come to my parents' house to see, you know, grandma and grandpa. I'm like, all their parents can take advantage of it. So if I do end up going back to teaching, I have to start at square one. But I don't know. I just, there's something about it, or maybe I'm supposed to mentor people. I don't know, but we'll see what his plans Casey, are. Come to my house, teach algebra for me. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're going to have the Mrs. Gray. No, thank you. <laughs> Cause that, there's a book. I'll have to find it. I'll have to go see if I kept it or I'll find you the title and I'll send it to you. It is a lifesaver. Cause I used to tutor it. So let me go f- see if I have it, if I still have it here on the shelf or um, I'll look it up and I'll let you know, but it is a, li- a game changer book. Oh yeah. My husband, he, he helped Alexis do all that. And I'm like, how does he remember all these tricks? I think I was not in school whenever I was in school mentally. I think I was checked out looking out the window all the time and just passed because I talked a lot of my teachers into grazing my grades. Um, the power of persuasion does help sometimes. And so I don't know how I graduated, honestly, but at any rate, um, so geometry after lunch next to the ROTC room, the teacher would come in and say, who wants to buy a soda? Cause sodas were 50 cents as a member of the ROTC. I was like, heck yeah, everybody wants a soda. He would go buy soda, come back. Who wants to learn today was literally the question asked. Nobody <laughs> raised their hand, but boy, howdy, we all had tests on Friday. Well, when that quarter was over, those that were repeating got just enough out of it, they passed. The rest of us didn't, and we got to go to study hall for the next quarter because we didn't pass. So Karen, I hear you on geometry. It's all. So, I'm awesome at algebra, and like I can teach them. I know the material. My problem is I got a screaming baby, a, one, a first grader who needs me to read to him and a fourth grader who is struggling because they missed a lot of curriculum last semester mm-hmm. Yeah, because of nice being out of school. She didn't really yeah. get, so, so now they're doing, she's doing her next grade, but she didn't fully learn the grade before. Yeah. So just you know like, what's cool? You're the teacher. So you can flip all that on its head. If you're normally teaching your older kid in the morning, start teaching them in the afternoon and teach I the do, I try one in the morning. Do them at the same time. Even if you do it different time. every day, do what you have to do. Yeah. But, but you're the teacher. So when you see that, you can flip it around. That's, Brittany, the, that's the power you have. Yeah. Brittany, I mean. awesome because I know right. who you are. 
Brittany, mm -hmm. I may have you, I may try to connect you with my really good friend. She is a homeschooler too, but she also has, she has six kids. And so she went through where she had, I know, bless her. Um, and she also went through where she was homeschooling with babies. So I'll, I'll call her today and see, maybe I can Facebook message y'all as well and hook up too. So, um, but yeah, we can, we can figure this out for you, Brittany. We're going to figure this out and everything. She's so. soaking wet. I just got handed a soaking wet water drink, <laughs> baby. So anyway. Um, does somebody mind praying us out so Brittany can go change diaper? Can you take one thing to Stacy real quick? Thank you, Stacy. I know when I'm talking to people, I'm trying to explain something to them. There's this dull look on their face and they're not getting it. So I know I'm going to do that. So having plan B and C is where you go to the next thing to get their intention. Right, Stacy? And uh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That's it. Very cool. I'll pray us out. Thank you, Juanita. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day that we can all get together and um, Thank you for Shannon for bringing your word to us, Lord. May it have spoke to each of us as we need it to do, Lord. I just pray for the homeschoolers here and um, give them the, the confidence and the wisdom and the knowledge and um, to do what they need to do, how they need to do it, Lord. And uh, for Brittany, especially, and the, the babies and like... Um, just give her the, the uh, confidence that she can handle this, Lord, and, and um, that she will put it all in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And Janie, we're going to definitely be praying for you, You're too, and for your class. So, okay, y'all have a great week. You, too. Bye-bye.